Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, and this is a drop roller, a machine that makes drops that was made in 1871 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we're going to use this machine today to make some hard candy. And the hard candy is a bit of an experiment in color and flavor. This is about the fourth batch of the day, and this is when I like to make experimental candy because the machine, while it's a little stained with food coloring from the previous batches, is also just right for making candy easily. There is an old saying that you taste food with your eyes long before you taste it with your mouth. The sight of a food or a color triggers a response which brings on the flavor and leads you to expectations. And this video is about those expectations. And expectations also take place culturally. As we've discussed in other videos, the United States sees purple as the flavor of a grape, specifically the Concord grape, and Europe sees the purple flavor in candy as the flavor for black currant. So now that my hot sugar is at 310 degrees, I pour it out on my candy cooling table, and I ask, what flavor is this? I mean, it's not clear. It could be anything. And that's what this video is kind of about. Wondering what the visuals, which you can see on the other side of the internet, are, and how they compare to the flavors, which are on my side of the video camera. These associations are well known by the people who make food and prepare food for you. Walk down the aisles of any supermarket, and you will see the tomato sauce mostly in red. And something that has blueberry in it will have a splash of blue. The color is there to key you to what you can't see and can't taste outside the packaging. And you are tasting with your eyes. And this is okay. It's because it's the way we were programmed. If you think about it, we must have developed food skills before we even developed language skills as a people. Because if you didn't know when the food was ripe or when it was dangerous to eat, you wouldn't be able to, you know, process the nutrients you need. So when something feels soft and even versus lumpy or icky, when something smells nice or something looks nice, you have expectations and the expectations are programmed into us. Earlier this year, with a laundry detergent tablet, we could see these expectations going the wrong way. And I think this is a video about breaking those expectations. Let me give you an example. There's something called the Stroop Effect. You see, you can't taste or smell the candy across the internet, but you can see colors and words just fine. So let's have some fun with them, and then try to apply that to candy. So let me demonstrate how you're programmed with colors. Now, I'm going to display some colors on the screen, and as I display them, say the color out loud. For instance, we're starting with orange. We'll then do red, green, yellow, blue, pink, red, orange. And you'll see the speed is pretty consistent when you do this. Remember, we're saying the colors. We don't really care about the words, but here the words and the colors will match. I want you to read these out loud, left to right, the colors that these words are. We'll get back to the Stroop effect in a few moments, but we're going to go play with the hot sugar now, and it's cooled off to a great consistency. It's sort of the consistency of Silly Putty or Play-Doh. We're going to put it through these brass rollers that will cool it off a little bit and make it keep its shape. If you'll notice, we're making lots of drop roll round candy here in an opaque red, and that opaque red is going to be important in a moment. So now to get at what I'm demonstrating. When I show you this next card, Read out loud the colors, not the words, but the colors, and uh, see if the delay is a little longer than last time. If you uh, did this experiment correctly and just read the colors, you'll find a delay going on between when you see it and when you can say it. Because your body's trying to say, or your brain is trying to say, the word that's printed, not the color of the word. And flavors are like this too. If you try a flavor that is red and it's colored blue, unless you've been trained to recognize that, like we have with blue raspberry, you're not going to end up saying, or tasting in this case, the flavor. And that's what our experiment today is. We're making drops in bunches of flavors, but they're all going to be the same color. 
And when in a meeting I told everybody what we were going to do, they looked at me and almost as once they said, that's madness. And I realized our flavor assortment now had a name, and madness it is. And we're going to uh, pack these candies randomly, mixed together, so you should get some of all the flavors, but what flavors? Some of them are going to be normal. Do you expect blackberry in pink? Or would you expect an apple in pink? We might have butter. We're looking at doing a salty flavor and a hot flavor with chili pepper in it, and other flavors with this. And the fun part is, we're going to be replacing flavors as we run out, so we're never quite going to know what's in the assortment, but there's always going to be six or seven flavors. I'm going to aim for a salty and a sweet and a sour and some other things in here, and you're going to have to guess the flavors. It's an assortment of fun and love. It's sort of combining spin the bottle and Russian roulette. And we'll give you hints online as we put them up, so pay attention when you order. But they're going to change, and we're going to throw some wild cards in too. Because, you know, April 1st is coming up, and we're going to have some fun with this candy. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to us here on YouTube. We have a lot more candy making videos. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if you want our candy, you can go to our website, which is www.pd.net. If you're ever in Tallahassee, we're right off I-10 in Tallahassee, Florida. Come and visit us in person, and if you're lucky, you can see us make candy. We don't make it every day, but we make it lots of days. We also want to thank the Classy Rex for letting us use their music. You'll find a link to their YouTube page in the description. And of course, to Prince Buster, the god of all ska musicians. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you around here again soon.